Right, hi everybody. This is going to be my kind of half-assed teardown video of the Makita Portable Cordless LXT Bandsaw XPB02 or DPB180Z. It's basically the same saw. Uh, the DPB is the UK name, XPB is the American name, and there might be another one out there as well. This is the American one I imported. Um, part of the reason for importing it, it was £100 cheaper to import it using eBay's global shipping program, but also I intend to fit a remote switch using this little thing, so there's no point in me buying one with a warranty if I'm going to drill a hole in it and void the warranty immediately. Um, I've used this saw a bit already, and I've removed the bumpers because they got in the way of the table I'm using, and it's very nice. <laughs> These are two of the little half inch steel slugs I've cut so far, which I'm going to be using for a different project. So I looked online to see if there were any teardown videos, and there aren't. So that's what I'm going to be doing here, is just trying to make something that gives an idea of how it comes apart. Um, we're going to be starting with this handle here, the main trigger handle. The front handle will come off, the front end will come off, and then the middle will split. And I'll go through that. You may notice this plate is different to the uh, standard one. That's to do with the table I have, which will be another video. Um, I'm not going to be fully splitting this apart, so that this will be an entire section. I won't be touching the back here. Um, there isn't much more going on there, but it's enough to get to the motor and the electronics, which is what I, what I want to do, because I intend on fitting this receptacle on the back of this piece here. It seems to just be the right size. I'll explain some of the issues with that when I get there, very briefly. Um, I've got some containers for the screws. I've had this part already, so I know roughly how it comes apart. Um, there aren't that many different types, but I'll try and split them out anyway. Uh, number two Phillips, a couple of different types, and six millimeter um, hex key are all I'm gonna need. I don't think these are actually Phillips, but um, that's what I'm going to use anyway. Uh, these are this is a, a USA imported tool and it's made in Japan. So these are probably uh, JIS, is it Japanese standard? <laughs> it doesn't feel quite right, but it's it's almost there. So this is okay. Um, I've already taken this apart plenty of times. So anyway, we have three essentially wood threaded screws here, which thread into the plastic. And as far as I can tell at this point, these are the same as the ones that are used in the body. So put that one in there. Hopefully you'll be able to see this and I won't be covering it over too much. I'll spin it around in a little bit. I was taking this part anyway, so I thought I may as well record it and it may be useful to somebody down the line. Now the two screws at the base here are machine screws. This is where this comes in handy because it's much smaller and easier to use. These two anchor the bottom of the handle to this plate here, to this part. Come on. <clears throat> then the handle will split. Um, yeah, that comes off completely. Put that to one side. And then the switch is exposed. Now what I'm gonna do with this thing is actually hook it up to the terminals of the switch. Um, yeah, the, ter the switch is there and I'll hook it up to the terminals, and this is rated for 20 amps. Um, this switch is a 24 volt, 20 amp. Whoops. So the uh, the contact, uh, the, the receptacle I'm using matches that, and so does the switch I'm going to use. And uh, yeah, 
nice clicky on and off. I've tested this with um, a multimeter. I have a clamp multimeter that reads DC amps and it does use 20 amps. So, you know, I, I'm making sure that it's actually rated. In fact, I'm going to grab the clamp meter and we'll see if we can get a, uh, a shot of it now just to show you. Okay, right, so I have my UNI-T little clamp meter here. Switch it on to 20 amps. Switch it over to DC. Put it onto this lead. I'll zero it out first. I don't know if there's any way you're going to be able to see that. Oh, there we go. You can just about see that. 5 amp hour battery. There's no blade in this thing, so I'm not concerned about it doing anything weird. But uh, let's pull the trigger and see how many amps it pulls. I already know the answer. So that was 7 amps. But as you can imagine, once this thing actually gets some load on it, it spiked up to 13 then. So actually at load, I trust that the rating of this is correct and um, I'm not going to try and run it with anything that's weaker. So I'm using a 20 amp um, connector and the switch, oops, the switch I'm using, I'm going to be using on the table is a 20 amp Carling A series uh, thermal circuit breaker which also works as a switch so I can turn it on and off and it's rated for 65 volts DC. So that will be absolutely fine. Anyway, let's get rid of this. Take the battery out. Put that down to one side and... So that's your switch. Um, yeah, screw terminals here that I'm going to tag onto, but careful with that. Now this back part, <clears throat> this is your lock for the trigger. This comes out quite easily. There's a metal piece that sits in there and this is, the de this is the detent that keeps the thing locked in, locked on. Now if that buggers off, your trigger isn't going to uh, click between locked and unlocked the way you want it to. So careful, try not to lose it, like I'm going to try not to do. Best thing for that is to keep it in in the hole, whichever way up it goes, <laughs> that way. Yeah, best thing is to keep it in there, otherwise it'll try and bugger off on you. And that might actually be the wrong way around. That way around. Yeah, that's your detent. So don't let that fall out. Keep, keep that in there and it'll stay there. That's out of the way. Next we're going to take off this handle. Six millimeter hex key. Doesn't take much. It was tighter to start with, but it doesn't take much. I only tighten it up loosely again. Now, the side that doesn't have the little hook on it has a washer, so two washers. So you have a spring washer and a plain washer on the end of there. Not to be confused with the other side, which, because it has the little grabby hook, it doesn't have a washer. So the washer goes on the non-hook side. And the uh, when you refit this, it has two little feet that go into the, uh, the side of the grab handle. If you were taking this hook off, you probably would want to use another washer the same size as, as the one that's on this side. Nearly lost it. So, two bolts for the hook, uh, for the handle. And we'll put that to one side as well. In fact, I'm going to put these in one of these tubs. Make sure the extra washer stays with it. More bits on the floor. Right. Next part to remove is this guard underneath the black plastic piece here and the the metal bridge across the back. This is plastic and this bit's metal. 
So four screws to remove this. These are machine screws, they're all the same size. These four come out, put those in a pot together, four of them, and this just lifts off. Put it out of the way. I tried to vac this out as best as I could, but you can't get everything. Now if you wanted to, at this point you can remove these two with the bearings. These two blocks are just screwed in. And these have uh, two pairs of bearings and then one bearing at the back. They all support the blade. Now we're going to remove this front wheel housing. And that's held in by four screws. And they're different length, varying length, as you will see once I start removing them. Do this one first. I'm not left handed. I probably should have put the camera on the other side. Loosen them off and then I can uh, whiz them out more easily. Again, I've had this part before, so they aren't particularly tight. We don't have to remove the... Oh, so okay, that one came out. I'll put it back just for a second. We don't have to remove the uh, brushes for this. This isn't a brushless tool. Last one hiding there. Get in there. So, for this front section, the top screws and the bottom screws are the same sizes, but between them they're different, and they're slightly different to the other end as well. So we have the top two screws are a certain length and the bottom two screws, which I haven't fully loosened, are also the same length as each other. So they're really long ones. Put those in that tray. You don't need to worry too much about mixing these up because when you put it in, you, it gets to a certain point and stops. So you, you know you've roughly got the right one. It's quite hard to mix those up. Obviously, if you put one in too long, then it's going to stick out too much. And if you put one in that's too short, then you won't reach the, uh, the plastic for it to bite before you actually uh, get there. And this front section comes off entirely. Surprisingly light, actually. <clears throat> And we're left with the main body of the saw. So your speed controller is here. You can just about see the speed controller. Probably can't. I'll get a light. Speed controller is in there. This section kind of floats around in there. And we're going to take out all of the screws on this edge. And. It would be really nice if I could support this in some way that you'd actually be able to see what's going on. We're going to be removing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. And they're all the same. This is this one is hidden before we remove that uh, that other section. There's really no way for me to hold that in place, but never mind. So that's the size of screw we're looking at. And they're all that same size. So they're all going in the pot together. These are the same size as the ones from the handle, the rear handle earlier on. <coughs> Magnetic screwdriver is a must because they're recessed quite deep into these holes and they aren't long enough come out. And don't forget this last one, because if you don't take that off, this whole section won't come away. Last one. You do actually need to remove the front ones. <laughs> So we're going to do the same on the front. 
to completely free it. These four. <clears throat> These are slightly different sizes to the other ones, but the same kind of rules apply. Different sizes to the small ones we had from before. But again, matching across the two sides. The two long ones on this part, on the back or the bottom, are the same as the two long ones on the other side. Now, this is free, and it can slide this way. It slides away. And at this point, it should split. Flip it over because this side wants to come off. And those are your two halves with access to the motor and battery connector, the speed controller, and the potentiometer for adjusting the speed. And also the lamp if you wanted to get to that for any reason. Now beyond here I think there's a there's quite a lot more dismantling to actually get to the gearbox. Uh, I don't immediately see a way of getting in there. There is another screw down there but I have no intention of getting that far. I'm going to stop at this point because this is as far as I need to go. I want access to this little section here to add this thing. And now there's a piece here that actually supports the speed controlling uh, potentiometer, so I'm going to have to get creative and see if I can drill the back of this without completely destroying it. Um, it could be possible. It won't take much to support the back of that, but um, it could be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'll make it up as I go along. Otherwise it could be hot gluing this in place, which I may still do anyway. And, uh, well, that's your money shot. That's the inside of the motor. Pretty simple. It's brushed. So not much to go wrong. And uh, that's one of the things I like about this. So it's the biggest saw. So it has the options with... Um, it has fitting options. So a lot I've seen quite a few uh, saw tables and vertical... Sorry, horizontal saw br um, bracket frames that use these two mounting points because they're very strong in the casting and they're threaded all the way through and uh, in my case it has the table designed for it which I'll show at the time. That's pretty much it really. I'm going to go and work out how to uh, drill this out without completely destroying it and uh, I shall probably update on a separate video when I've done that. Thanks for watching.